Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you for joining us once again. So as we see this beautiful setting and we see the sun perhaps rising on a new day, perhaps setting on a day just completed. Again, that even depends on how we look at things in so many ways. The human experience is a unique experience and it's meant to be a unique experience. It's part of the divine plan of basically consciousness exploring its own creation. So there were some things that really hit me in the past few days. And um, honestly, I've been feeling so much, so much love indwelling and coming from the heart, so much gratitude for you know, all the wonderful things in my life, including uh, the one sitting right next to me here. And the ones sitting by my feet as well, the two little furry ones, if you know what I mean. Um, some, you know, really profound things are, are hitting me and resonating deeply within. And as we've talked about so many times, you know, right now we're in a period of letting go. We're letting go of a darker era in human existence. And a very, very unenlightened era, basically ruled by fear and control and power. Greed, jealousy, envy, you know, all the things we could, uh, well, basically sum them up with the seven quote unquote deadly sins. And yet to me, one of the deadliest quote unquote sins is the very concept of original sin, because it basically makes us out to be damned because we're born. And you know what? I don't believe that. Not for a second. What's, what's happening now is, as many people are shedding so much of their societal conditioning and they're letting go of things that we have to let go of in order to move forward. People are taking the blinders off, you know, and they're, they're starting to not be afraid to speak up. They're starting to not be afraid to be the black sheep in the bunch. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes it takes one person, you know, to lead many and then the many will follow, and then we have a true movement that creates real change. And, you know, being that first person to step out of line and to question something, some of us just have it in our nature. Some of us are, you know, kind of fiery <laughs> in so many ways, and it's just part of our nature to question everything, as so many others just simply go along with whatever the societal norm is and are terrified of standing out. But if you're listening to this video, the chances are that you're one of the ones that's ready to go ahead and stand out. Go ahead and speak up. Go ahead and take a chance. Go ahead and speak your truth and not be living in fear. Our society has been completely fear-based. Conform, be afraid, be less than you are. You must be approved of by others. You must be approved of by your church, by your political affiliation, by your family, by, you know, you name it, whatever groups you belong to, by your school, your classmates. But yet we see that there is, well, there's a rebellion of sorts going on and it's growing. People are, are learning to speak up for themselves and think for themselves. And of course, the powers that be don't want you thinking for yourself. The fear of hell is a very powerful motivation. Oh, most definitely. And so that has been driven into the minds and the hearts of so many people. It's this fear-based reality. And you know what? That fear-based ba reality is not mine. I'm never going to accept it. You know, I see comments from time to time of people that think that they have the key to salvation and only them. Well, who needs salvation? Maybe perhaps we are our own salvation. Perhaps there is no salvation to be had. And then the question comes and came up in recent days. Well, who do you think made you? Well, how about we made ourselves? Perhaps, you know, we are consciousness operating on a much higher plane of existence, wanting to have an experience in this 3D reality, a lower vibrational realm from which we currently live because the lower vibrational realm that we find ourselves in is one that affords a great opportunity for growth through experience and through experiencing the dualities that we see exhibited in this reality. 
So perhaps nobody created you. Perhaps you always were. Perhaps you are an eternal, eternal, we could call it soul, spirit, being. Ultimately, it's consciousness and energy. And you are energy. I am energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It only changes. It can transform. It could evolve through growth and experiences. However, if we realize these things, then it's going to be very hard for others to control us. And so, as we said, the fear of hell is a very powerful motivation and also leads to a lot of riches for certain people as they control the masses through fear. Fear of this life, fear of what happens in the next life as far as punishment. And that has filled the coffers of many a religious organization, many individuals as well. And, you know, of course, this extends beyond just the religious realm. Social control is best managed through fear. And that's true. That is the way people can control others through fear, through intimidation, and of course, through societal norms. But more and more of us are waking up and saying, screw the societal norms. And we're not afraid of your legends and your myths and your fables. You know, we, we've been controlled through uh, a lot of different fairy tales. Have you ever read any of Grimm's fairy tales? They are pretty damn grim. And what are they doing to kids? Traumatizing them, telling them, you know, these stories of witches going to bake you in ovens and all sorts of things. Even little fairy tales we grew up with, you know, ashes, ashes, they all fall down. I mean, referring to, you know, tragic events. And think about the society that indoctrinates and brings into the minds of their youth all these negative thought forms. These are conditioning people in negative ways. So who's really leading us? You know, who are these great minds that, that lead this country? And, that, and we're talking on both sides, both parties. And we're talking really, you know, beyond the whole party system. As we see, they pay great attention to things, don't they? Uh, aren't these brilliant minds leading us? I, I doubt it. Uh, devious in many cases, most definitely. Yeah, we see how this world operates, and, it, and it's not about compassion and love. This system that we have found ourselves in, you know, must go. It simply must go. So do you dare to be yourself? And this sign is perfect. Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. You're a unique expression of divinity. This is your destiny. You're here to experience what it's like to be you. Think for yourself. Throw away your yoke of fear. Don't live in fear anymore. Go within. It's better to conquer yourself than to win a thousand battles. Then the victory is yours. It cannot be taken from you. Not by angels or by demons or by heaven or hell. Buddha also said that the only hell exists in the minds of those that believe in it. And yet people have tried to control us through fear throughout the ages. And this is yet another form of that. But we're waking up. We're realizing that we don't have to believe in things, line of thoughts, philosophies, and the like that are thousands of years old that we did not experience ourselves. We're just going on what other people have told us. That is somebody else's life. That is somebody else's experiences perhaps and perhaps not even the case as we don't really know what is true if we can't trust our own government agencies now how can you trust something that is hundreds thousands of years old we really can't were you there did you experience it no you didn't so what can you do to uh, find your own truth well you could go within and have the guts and the patience and the power to actually try to still your mind and to go within and find your own truth. Be conscious fully in every single moment. Really realize exactly how you're operating. When we take the time to still the mind, we can sometimes get glimpses beyond the ego because most of us are controlled by the ego. 
which is all about survival. The ego is all about survival of the self. And is that an evil thing? No. No. But when the ego takes control of us, and the ego does have that function of keeping us alive and not doing things that are potentially life-threatening and stupid, yet when we let it control us, it can get out of control itself. And we can lose track of exactly who we are at the core. When we reset ourselves by taking the time to go within to actually notice your stream of thoughts, take the time to just follow your breath. There are many different good breath patterns that could really help you, such as taking the time to slowly inhale to a count of one, two, three, four, hold your breath, one, two, exhale, one, two, three, four, hold your breath, one, two, and repeat. And then in time, extending that out. What it will do for you is it will get you out of the sympathetic nervous system and making cortisol and all the stress hormones, which give you that adrenaline response and keep you in that fight or flight. And it'll get you into the parasympathetic side, which is the rest and digest. And it'll produce the feel good hormones in the body that will not only start to heal your body, but also allow your mind to rest and relax, allow you to start to perceive things that are repetitive thoughts that keep coming up on a daily basis. 80% of our thoughts are the same things every single day. It's just a nonstop you know, I would say tape track in the old days, CD in more modern history, and now it might be an MP4 uh, that's constantly playing your same thoughts over and over again, nothing new, thinking about tomorrow, thinking about yesterday, but not being here now. And that will not lead us to the highest level of self-awareness. We have to take the time to follow our breath, and go deeper, you know, follow your breath and follow it into any place that maybe you feel a little bit of tension, a little bit of heaviness, a little bit of pain. Go to that area with your mind and then breathe in peace. Breathe in feeling good and tranquil and calm. Breathe out any anxiety, Bring out, breathe out any fear and breathe out the pain. You could follow it that way. You could relax one body part at a time, focusing in on your toes, tense up your toes a little bit, and then relax as you exhale. Focus on your feet as a whole, tense up your feet a second, and then relax and let it go. Do the same with your calves, then your thighs, then your abdomen, going all the way up to your head and your facial muscles. And then you know, feel what it's like to tense it up and then relax. That's another good exercise to allow you to start to get away from the monkey mind that never stops. The mind that's just like the mouse on the wheel that will go forever, the energizer bunny that never ends. So when we start recognizing these repetitive thoughts, and then we could actually analyze them and say, well, why am I thinking that way? Well, you know, perhaps you realize that as a kid, there was something that was fear-based that was put into you that got you thinking that way. And perhaps you're one of those people that thinks, well, what's going to go wrong today? You know, I have this big meeting. What's my boss going to say? I, you know, am I not going to get my raise? Am I going to get fired? What have you? There's so many different things. And there's that fear and anxiety about what can happen. Or there's also the regret or the anxiousness about things that did happen and what that's going to cause to come in the future. So when we realize that all these things are just repeating over and over and over again, we could release them and start to rewrite that programming because it is, it is programming. It's as if what we are inhabiting here are, are biological avatars. They are just basically bodies. We are not the body. And that is a, a great meditation as well, just simply re repeating, I am not the body, I'm not even the mind, I'm the observer. You know, you don't have to put that part in as well, but you could. And just let the realization come to you. I remember when it first came to me, 
I was always terrified of my aunt's house, which was a big old Victorian house. It was the family house that during the depression, like 14 people lived in. It had one bathroom on the second floor. It was big and creepy. And I never wanted to go up there by myself when I was a little boy. And I would have nightmares that, that kept going on well into my early 20s, um, all about that house and there being something in the house. And I, I just feel there's this energy, this consciousness that's in the house and it's going all over the house and it feels very haunting. And in meditation, it came to me what it was. It was me outside of my body. And, and it freaked me out. But it was a realization that only came to me after deep meditation Deep meditation can change everything. Never be defined by your past. It was just a lesson, not a life sentence. And so, you know, we shouldn't keep bringing up things of the past. We need to let them go. One of the greatest meditative tricks to do is as these repetitive thoughts come up, see them as, as floating along in a river and just watch them and then watch them float on by and go away and you never see them again let them go that's part of the great lesson of these times just let it go you gotta let it go because if you don't let these things go they're like a heavy stone tied around your neck as you're swimming in the river and they're pulling you down and now is not the time to be pulled down so forgive yourself and forgive others in the end, only three things matter. How much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you or those things that no longer serve you. It could be tough in this world with all the pressures we have. You know, how do you meditate at your uh, desk with all these pressures that this world is putting on us? And it's part of the matrix. It's part of the system. It's intended to be that way. Well, many people are stepping outside of the system, and it looks different from every single person. We can have balance, peace, and harmony in our life, and we will find more as we get rid of the societal conditioning that has so plagued us. And when we do, it's amazing what we discover. We discover that the world around us truly is magical magic does exist we can move mountains we can do amazing things when we get rid of this limited fear-based reality mindset that has been so imprinted on us and it comes from everywhere we look at every aspect of our lives so just simply set your heart on doing good do it over and over again and you will be filled with joy amazing um it's amazing the wisdom of buddha and the wisdom that we find in so many of the eastern traditions as well as the western mystery traditions they are freeing they're not limiting so you must take time for yourself what good are you to, to others if you're not at peace with yourself this takes work but you can only lose what you're what you cling to and again, it's about fear, fear of loss. You know, there was an old saying, uh, if you truly love something, let it free and it'll come back to you if it truly loves you and is meant for you. And that is so true. As we go through the changes that are actually changing our DNA, changing our consciousness, opening up our chakras, activating our kundalini, we're no longer going to be able to tolerate what was tolerable in the past. Meditation is just the courage to be silent and alone. Slowly, slowly, you start feeling a new quality to yourself, a new aliveness, a new beauty, a new intelligence, which is not borrowed from anybody, which is growing within you, it has roots in your existence. So why do we need to borrow anybody else's thoughts? Actually have your own. Why do we need to borrow anybody else's matrixes? their belief systems why not develop our own why do we need to be conformed by society is it for your benefit or is it for the benefit of those that have been controlling this reality and this reality how does it look what is the fruit of that control is it a beautiful peaceful world of harmony if we keep doing the same, we're going to get the same results.
and we don't need those type of results. So my friends, as always, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. As always, my friends, I look forward to your comments. God bless and namaste.